Welcome back everyone, my name is Jordan, and today we're going to be continuing our journey from 1950 to 1990 to art and music history, and today we are going to finish up the 1980s with feminist art. Uh, now rising in popularity in the late 1980s, uh, surrealism kind of crumbled beneath the emotions that uh, neo-expressionism, which we don't really need to talk about, but more or less uh, crumbled beneath the feminist movement uh, that sought to invoke with their works of art. Uh, now, criticism rose uh, in the late 1980s about how women uh, and men were differently portrayed in art, as women were often uh, represented uh, in an exposed and arguably inappropriate way, uh, where men were depicted as more uh, noble and intricate, right? There was, there was this inequality in how women and men were depicted in art. Now, the same critics began to bring up how Western art uh, mirrors the inequality scene between men and women in the real world, uh, kind of showing that even in art, you know, men and women weren't really equal during this time. Uh, so because of that, uh, it's known as the first wave of feminist art. Uh, women artists kind of started to kind of revel in the female, uh, the feminine experience, which basically just means they were really embracing their femininity and what made them a woman, and kind of exemplifying that through their art. Um, that resulted in a lot of female imagery uh, and like the female portion of the reproductive cycle and using different mediums like embroidery uh, to kind of show their art symbolically kind of retaking what was thought of as women's work with embroidery and making it its own art form, kind of reclaiming that uh, stereotype. Uh, now, later feminist artists did reject this approach and... Uh, and attempted to reveal the origins of our ideas of femininity and womanhood, uh, and they pursued the idea of femininity as a masquerade and a set of poses adopted by women to conform to the social expectations of womanhood, right? So their idea were basically the fact that a lot of modern femininity wasn't what women actually wanted and tried and find the origins of what it really meant to be a woman. Now, of course, that varies a lot for a lot of people of what they feel like to be a woman, deep down. Uh, personally, I can't really speak on that, uh, but for other people, that's a result that they kind of have to come to themselves. I, I feel like that's more of a personal journey than something you can kind of represent uh, for a whole group through art. Um, but looking at the more popular version of feminist art that we were talking about, this first wave, um, what we are going to do is we are going to research uh, a particular feminist artist uh, on our own time, right, for the, for the handout, and kind of go through what their views were on uh, the inequality between men and women and even some stuff in their personal life. So moving on to the product portion um, of this uh, art form, uh, using a phone or laptop, uh, we're gonna research a feminist artist that we find especially interesting or unique. Um, now, finding somebody, right, can be kind of easy, but the, the biggest thing that you're gonna wanna do is you're going to try and figure out how you found the artist, right? You're going to want to record that. What do you like about their art, your favorite piece, uh, and something interesting about their life, right? So, you know, being able to just search up feminist artists and click on the first result, that might not net you what you really want to see, right? It might be a little bit boring to you or maybe not as interesting as, as you want. So really try and dig deep. Um, you don't have to go to any, like, scholarly website. If you just want to browse through Google, that's fine. But try and find somebody that really connects with you and uh, figure out something interesting about their life. Um, kind of try and fill in those blanks and, and see if there's something more than meets the eye about this artist. Is part of their biography kind of talking about why they got into feminist art? Is part of their life story conductive to why they are in feminist art in the first place? Try and uh, figure that out. Now, uh, as a group tour, uh, ask your friends and family if they know of the artist you chose to research. Um, you know, if not, what do they think of the art? Do they think uh, the medium the artist used was interesting or boring? You know, get their genuine opinions. Uh, to extend your journey, uh, if, you're phys uh, if you're artistically inclined, you know, try making art using the mediums that feminist artists do, uh, whether that be through embroidery, spoken word, whatever particular artist you come across, try and create your own piece of art uh, through whatever medium that they use. If it's traditional art, then you can even just do traditional art and just kind of stretch your limbs and, and try something artistic, you know, whatever you want to do. Now, uh, to finish out, since this is, uh, a lot of this is kind of on your end of researching 
a lot of stuff. I'm going to include a snippet from a video right here, kind of explaining the history of feminist art a little bit more and giving maybe uh, some more insight that I wasn't able to articulate quite as well. So um, <clears throat> I'm going to have that uh, be brought up right here and hopefully everyone can glean a little bit more from uh, that video. <laughs> At that time, in the late 60s, early 70s, mid-70s, for a woman to openly express her own content was extremely dangerous. It was tantamount to risking one's well, for me, what little modest reputation I had at the time. And as a sort of, you know, wrought in the macho environment of L.A. art of the 60s. And uh, faced with things like attitudes like, uh, you know, you can't be a woman and an artist too, the idea that there was no such thing as female content, that women didn't have a different point of view. I mean, none of that was accepted. It wasn't even thought about at that time. And so what does that do? What does it do to a young woman who is raised in an environment of form, visual form, that comes out of the male experience? So I was basically alone at that time and extremely isolated, and, and yet I was deeply committed to being myself as an artist. And so in these drawings, I tried to face the constraints of the formal language I had inherited and figure out how I could break through it, literally break through it, without sacrificing the transformation of form, you know, the beauty of form and color and line, but to find a way to be myself using it. And the drawings actually chronicle that. All right, I hope everybody found Judy Chicago's video on feminist art really interesting. I hope that kind of brought to light um, a little bit more information and helped you kind of find your footing and maybe find some inspiration. Uh, that does conclude our lesson for today. Of course, that video and all other resources will be linked uh, on the blog post on uh, Artsphere Interactive. Um, I hope everybody had a good time with me kind of talking about and working through feminist art. Um, I know that this one's going to be a lot more on your part, but I do hope you have some fun trying to find an artist that does resonate with you in this particular form of art. Uh, so I hope everybody had a good time, and I'll see you in the next one.